Hey guys, I'm Evan. Welcome to Country View Acres. So today we're going to be raking and baling hay. I cut it two days ago. It's been sitting out in the sun, so hopefully it's dry enough that we can bale it up today. I'm going to go through the hay rake first thing. I know we got a wheel bearing over here that's making some noise, so we need to check that out. So this here is actually the drive wheel that runs the rake. I guess both of them probably do. It's got an overrun clutch in it. Allows it to back up and not turn the rake, but it has a ton of slop in it. And I think it's that slop that I'm hearing, I think. Oh, it's got slop side to side also. Looks like it's just pinned on the axle. So as we look inside of this hub, I don't know if you can see, there's little gears around the outside edge or the inside edge there. And that's that clutch that drives forward, but then it slips as it goes backwards. I think there's a broken off piece in there. There is. A little piece broken off. So this right here is the part that we took off. This is what I'm gonna call the overrun clutch. It may be called something else. But that spring-loaded gear tooth grabs one direction and turns the drive shaft and it pushes down and skips going the other direction. And I don't see any pieces on this necessarily broken. I'm not sure where that piece came from. So right here there is bearings inside of here and they seem to be fine. But that wheel, it actually has a bushing. Right inside of here, this bushing. And that's what's worn out because it's really sloppy. And that is nothing that I can fix today because I'll have to order a bushing that's the right size. There is a little bit of side to side movement. I think I can add another washer on the drive shaft there and that'll help with that. But I think I'm pretty limited on what I can do today. I'm gonna have to do some research and order some parts. Well, we're gonna try to run this washer through the lathe. It needs to be an inch and a quarter inside diameter and this is a one inch washer. All right, there we go. Just over an inch and a quarter. Get our spacer put on here. All right, I got the hay rake hooked up. I got it hooked up to a draw bar here, and that's gonna help offset it over to the left-hand side. This is a smaller tractor than what would normally have been used on this. This is only five feet wide. So right now, the pickup tooth is right here. That's the farthest that it will pick up. So as I'm driving the tractor, I'll know that the farthest grass that I can rake will be the very side of my rear tire. And I think that's where I want to run it on this smaller 24 horsepower tractor because it's just a lot easier to judge where you're actually raking hay when you got it lined up with the tires like that. And I do like using the three point arms to tow the rake because I can raise it up and down from the driver's seat. Originally, this rake has a hand crank on it and that was the only way to raise it up and down. So this setup just works way better for me. All right, gotta get the drive belt on so it'll turn the rake. We take the belt off because it will help it uh, last longer. It's kind of a unique belt. Lower the rake down. We're going through the grass but not hitting the dirt. That looks good right there. All right, so the way I normally do this field is I go around the outside first. It's usually thinner on the outside. I make one big windrow on the outside edge and that leaves me enough space where I can turn and then I just go up up and down and make rows but I'll, I'll rake this 
right here, I'll rake this over to the side so I have an area where I can turn around in. So let's go ahead and get it done. Sounds nice and dry, doesn't it? Still got some color in it. So I'm pretty happy with the way this has turned out. It looks good and it looks like there's a lot more than what I thought there was gonna be. So I predicted the other day, I think five bales off of this field and 10 off the other. I think that's gonna end up being higher, probably end up being higher in both fields. But let's go ahead, we'll get the other one raked up and uh, we should be able to bale here in a few hours. All right, I just got done raking this second field and these are single windrows. I did, I did double in the other field. I predicted there was twice as much hay on this field as the other. I don't think that's gonna be quite the case. It's gonna be close. There is still more hay in this field, but let's grab the baler, get it hooked up. Well, that seems like every year there's a bird that builds a nest in here over winter. No eggs. All right, I've got the baler all greased up, ready to go. And off camera, I replaced the bale size sensor, which is up in this upper corner. And this is the sensor right here. This was like a $250, I think, somewhere around in there. Very expensive for that little sensor. Ridiculous, really. And I replaced it because this has had trouble auto-tying. And the reason it won't auto-tie is because it never thinks the bale reaches the correct size. It, it, it doesn't detect the bale size. And the way that works is this sensor counts a gear on a tooth as it is turning as the bale gets bigger. So every so many teeth is so many inches on that bale and it can't sense that gear and count the bale size. So I'm hoping now that we've got it replaced, we've got it set to the proper distance, that today hopefully this will auto tie consistently for the first time. So let's get out in the field and try it out. So this is our first round bale. The bale size sensor worked. It did detect the size the whole time, four and a half foot diameter. But when it got full, it beeped that it was the right size, but then it never auto tied, which is weird. Uh, so I don't understand why it didn't do it. I had to end up manually tying it, but we're gonna keep on going. Uh, hopefully that was just a glitch. Hopefully it works next time.
All right, second bale, auto tie worked that time. So size worked the whole time. I th I'm thinking this is gonna work. All right, let's keep going. It's like five in the evening. We try to get this done before it gets dark. All right, I almost forgot to check the moisture in here. 14.5, that's good. 13, nope, 14.5. Pretty consistent, 14.5% moisture. It's perfect. All right, just finished up this first field. That is bale number eight. I predicted five. There was definitely more on here than I thought. And I don't know if you can see that. There's only about 40 feet left of windrow to pick up and then we'll head over to the next field. But you can see all the round bells out here. One back there, plenty more grass than I thought I had on here. So if I got eight on this field, I predicted twice as much on that field. We'll see what happens. So far, everything has gone really well until the gas gauge started flashing empty on me. So I had to stop, run to the closest gas station to get diesel. And um, by the time you go there, fill up your cans, probably adding at least a half an hour to this job. I'd like to get it done before it gets dark, it's 7.30 already in the evening. So I'm probably just over halfway done through this field. I've got to definitely get the diesel tank set up so that we always have diesel on hand because I'm always in the middle of a project and I run out. Can number two. All right, 10 gallons is in. Finish it up. Well, after I filled up with diesel, I think I made two bales and then I screwed up and I broke the shear pin on the PTO shaft, the shear bolt, and I have some bolts. They're all too short. So now I gotta walk all the way back and find some longer bolts. And the sun's already down over the horizon. So it is gonna be dark by the time I get done. All right, new shear bolt in. PTO shaft hooked back up. All right. All right, here's a, what the shear bolt looks like. Oh, that's all it takes to stop the baler. Quarter inch bolt. And um, if I start the PTO shaft up at anything more than idle, with the engine revved up, there's a good chance I shear it. And that's pretty much what happened. That's what I think happened. So let's go ahead get this finished up I'm ready for it to be done
So last night things went downhill pretty quickly. I had like a series of unfortunate events. So it kind of started off with the baler, even though it was auto tying, you can still mess it up, operator error. So when, um, when it goes to auto tie, it puts the twine arm back and then the operator, me, I'm supposed to pull forward. It pulls grass into the baler. It also pulls the string in there and then the string starts wrapping around the bale so that it ties it. Well, I forgot to do that. So I'm sitting in the cab of the tractor, waiting for it to get unti done untying. It beeps at me, I think it's done. So I send the bale, eject it out the back. Turns out the beeping was an error because it didn't tie it. So then I had to unroll that bale. And a five to 700 pound bale, not the easiest thing to unroll, at least for the first couple hundred feet. So none of this was on camera because my camera was all the way at the far end of the field. So I started unrolling the bale backwards from the baler, got to the end of the field. I only had it about half unrolled, had to turn it around and start unrolling it back toward the center of the field. After that, I'd gotten the tractor, started baling again. And then as I came back around the field and started I was gonna bail up that bale I unrolled, right? And I got to the spot where I U-turned that bale and turned it around. And it was about an eight foot wide area, piled high, full of hay. And as I turned into that, I kind of came in, you know, kind of from the side, I guess. And, it's, and it came into the baler, into the side, just like this. And it balled up on that gauge wheel there on the side. And it balled up enough that hay got into the PTO shaft and then it pulled a wad of hay into the PTO shaft and started spinning that hay. The hay whipped around, it grabbed the cable that goes between the tractor and the baler, wrapped it around the PTO shaft and ripped it off on both ends. So as soon as that happened, my first thought is we're done. We're done baling. We're gonna have to come back tomorrow and square bale this. So here is the cable that it ripped off that goes between the baler and the tractor. So I jump in the tractor and the bale monitor is actually still working. Still knows the bale size, everything's displaying correctly. So I jog the twine arm out to see whether it worked and it still worked. I'm like, well, maybe I can manually tie this bale. So I went ahead, I finished getting the bale to size and I manually tied it, ejected, it, called it for the night. So the next day I got up came out to investigate where did these wires go that it ripped off. So the wires came out of this hole right here. There's one, it actually splits. There's one cable that goes to the right and there's another cable right here, it goes to the left. So I started tracing the wiring out through the inside of the baler all the way to the back of the baler is where it came. And that wiring came back here to the tail lights, to the brake and the turn signal. And as soon as I realized what it was, like instant relief just like went over me. It was like all the stress was gone. It's like, well, I don't need tail lights to bail hay. I can bail without the tail lights. So everything should still be intact. The control cable looks like it wasn't damaged. So the baler should still work perfectly. It just doesn't have tail lights. So I'd actually forgot that there is a separate cable just for like the trailer wiring for the tail lights. And Right here, still in the back of the tractor. Here it is. This is the seven pin plug that would be like on a trailer that you'd plug into your truck and it ripped the cable right out of the back of that. But last night that never even occurred to me that that's what it could have been. But <laughs> I am so glad that that's all that it was. This cable, now that I think about it and I remember, was way shorter than the other cable and it actually had to route over the top of the PTO shaft. So when I go back and fix this later on, I will make sure that this cable is plenty long enough to reach over there. Plus they're supposed to be looking at the manual. There's supposed to be, I think some kind of, I don't know, like cable support that comes up here to route the cables up and, and above the PTO shaft, which is not there. And then the PTO shaft is missing its cover, which I believe that's the way it's been since I bought it. Um, so there's a few things here that I can definitely improve upon and it could have been a lot worse than what it was. So I think there's only probably two or three bales left to bale up. So I'm gonna head back out to the field. We're just gonna verify that the auto tie works properly like it should and we're gonna finish this job up because believe me, I'm ready for it to be over with.
All right, I just finished up. Ended up bailing three more bales. So on this field, we had a total of 18 round bales. That is the most we've ever gotten off this field. I had predicted that this field had twice as much hay as the other fields, and it did. There's eight in that side, 18 on this side. But I did predict five and 10 bales, and man, we've got almost twice as much as what I estimated. So very happy with the results. This is the most hay that we have gotten so far in one cutting. So I've got more hay before off of that other field. I think I've got 10 bales off of that other field before, but this field, I think I've only got maybe 12 and we got 18 off of it this time. So definitely was an improvement on this field for sure. So very happy. So a total of 26 round bales between the two fields. Uh, we're gonna store, I think all of this, there's actually just a little bit in the baler. I think it says it's only like a foot and a half in diameter. I'll probably pull that out and just go ahead and feed that to the steers. But we are gonna have the steers over winter this year, which is different than normal. So I do need more hay this winter because we're definitely gonna have more livestock over the winter than previously. So this is good. I was worried about having enough forage and it's starting off at least good so far this year. We'll have to wait and see what the rest of the year turns out like. You know how the weather is. You never know if it's gonna be dry or wet. But anyway, I think that's gonna be it for this video. Um, things went really south the other night, but could have been way worse. Um, in fact, I thought it was about as bad as it could have got that night. And, um, but yeah, it's, the baler worked fine. It just uh, auto-tied the bales like it should. So I think the baler is actually operating better than it ever has since I've owned it. It's just doesn't have any taillights anymore. I'll have to try to get those fixed. So there's a list of things on this piece of equipment that I probably need to order and see if I can repair it as well. Just like everything else we've got out for hay. Everything needs a little bit of uh, TLC. But anyway, I think that's going to be it for this video, guys. So I hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one. Oh, and I kicked the tripod. Oops.